is Jamie Averbeck. I'm the Instructional Technology Coordinator for Ashwaubenon Schools. Um, I want to start by thanking everybody for carving time out of your schedule. I know that as educators, we've got a lot on our plates, so giving up a Thursday night to learn is, is pretty awesome. Um, we have 18 different school districts represented here tonight, so that's, that's, really, that's really cool. Um, so with that, I want to start by thanking our sponsors. Uh, the Neville for just donating this fantastic space. Um, we're going to kind of use two spaces tonight, the auditorium, and then we'll break out um, to the large meeting room area, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And also, I want to thank Camera Corner. They provided some technology for us to use tonight, as well as um, their catering snacks. So you'll have some, uh, some vegetables and fruits and cake, which is always good. Um, so we'll do that. I also... Uh, would like to thank, she's going to hate this, I'd like to thank my wife, who's right there, hi, everyone wave, for putting up with me the last week. My stress level's been a little up, but she's here to learn as well. She teaches in Eshwabanon, too. So with that, I want to talk a little bit about format. This is going to go by pretty fast tonight. We'll have five speakers. They're each going to get four minutes, and then we'll have a kind of a one-minute transition in between. I've got a timer over there, which I'll set up in a little bit. Um, so you'll get five quick tools, actually six this first time, because um, we snuck Mike Jaber in at the end here. Um, and then we're going to leave and go into the large meeting room where each presenter will have an area with a projector and they'll be able to dig in deeper if you want. And during that time, you'll just be able to reflect, collaborate, eat some snacks, have conversations with people you are with or with the presenters. <coughs> and at 7.30, we'll come back and do it all over again. So we'll do two different sessions. We'll, we'll have 10 speakers total. Does that make sense? You guys ready? All right. So if you're a Twitter user, we're using the hashtag... Uh, Tundra 17, feel free to use that tonight um, to promote this. And now the funny part is I get to be the first presenter because I'm going to go uh, start my time with the board. Which those of you who know me, I talk really fast. So, so Ryan from the Neville, um, the educator at the Neville, has the flu. Has the flu. So and he you decided it's probably best he wasn't with y'all. <laughs> The voice you turn the back is Beth Lemke. She's the director of the Neville. So you can check her later. All right. Start. Maybe. Or not. Josh, you're in charge. All right. So what Ryan was going to talk to, uh, bear with me because I'm kind of doing this cold, but we'll get there. Um, Ryan wants to talk about the virtual learning opportunities with the Neville Public Museum. And the cool thing is, is that Ashwaubenon and the Neville have experienced a pretty nice partnership. And it's kind of been our sweet spot. It's been in fourth grade because the Neville's just got a lot of awesome Wisconsin history content. Um, what we've been able to do, we've been able to connect with the Neville uh, doing Google Hangouts where we've got um, the basically the Neville experts and artifacts on, on this end. And then on the back side, which you can kind of see in these pictures, are eight fourth grade classrooms. And they're connecting with Neville. They're talking about relevant things in their curriculum. They're able to ask questions that, as teachers, we always go, um, I'll think about that and get back to you. Um, they know the answers. And the neat thing is, the first year, we really just kind of picked high interest items. This last year, we really dug into what was curricularly appropriate and how to really add on to the curriculum. Um, and it's been awesome. Ryan came to our fifth grade Civil War reenactment, <laughs> and you would have thought he was a member of One Direction, because all the fourth graders were like, hey! They all knew exactly who he was. Um, so the neat thing with the Mondo pad, which you'll see in the breakout room, is they're kind of mobile. And they got a lot of cool things up in collections. How many pieces do you think you have? I'm just putting on the spot. Um, we have almost a million film negatives and well over 350,000 uh, three-dimensional objects. So depending on what you're covering in social studies, I'm guessing they have something that's going to be relevant. They're, they're pretty awesome. So they've been in the main gallery. They've been up in collections. They've been in front of a suit of armor. Uh, they've been all over the place. Um, the, the, it's, it's, it's been a really cool experience. So some examples, some of the things that, that we really connect to culture. The technology of the past and future was awesome. What they did is they took the iPhone and they showed everything that the iPhone can do and what that looked like in like 1924, what that looked like in 1940. And it was pretty interesting to the kids to see how spoiled we are now. Um, the Mysteries of Ancient Egypt, and also, um, they did that, uh, I'm telling you what they called it, like curiosities or oddities. They did it right around October, so we looked at a lot of mummified things, and that was, again, very interesting to the kids. And it's, just, it's been a really, really great partnership, and I'll just give you a little tiny clip here. All right, looks like we're 
looks like we're all set. So it's good to see everybody. <coughs> Anybody here like art class classes, all classes in school? If you do, we have a lot of really cool artwork. We tend to have a lot of that um, after the holidays, so that's a great time to come see us if you like to see some really cool artwork. We also do. All right, so just real quick, if you're not familiar with Google Hangouts, it's fantastic because you can have so many kids involved, and they're really good at making sure they take questions from the kids and, and really catering towards what we need. Um, it's just a great example how to leverage our community. I mean, the Neville's been awesome. Um, Jen's gonna talk about it a little bit. Tomorrow, we're gonna be using virtual things out at Fallen Timbers. Um, there's a lot of just great resources in our community. And it wasn't, I didn't have to twist their arm. They were willing partners. So it's, it's something that I think, to think about who you can connect with, thinking about your content in the community. And I'm way down early, that's awesome. So I'm gonna stop with that. So during the breakout session, Beth will have some informationals of, of, of what they have to offer as far as programming. And like I said, the best thing is just to have a conversation and see how they can be a support for your curriculum. Yeah. Anything to add, Beth? Are you good? No, I was going to say, we just, like I said, we, we love ideas and we love to partner. So if you come to us and you know, we're happy to help you out. Yeah. 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 Oh, I almost forgot. Stop, Fred, you're not coming up yet. I forgot something else I'm going to do. Before we go start, I have to do something. I have this 360 camera. We're going to take a 360 selfie with everybody. Sorry. Okay. I have, a, I have an ADHD problem. All right, so everyone, it's a 360 camera, so just go ahead and look towards the middle. Hold on, be patient. i got to get on the right network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a web-based platform, excuse me, that runs a whole bunch of different applets, actually, for, to be exact, that you can use in your classroom to really engage students. So if you think about clicker systems, or you think about things like Poll Everywhere, or even if you think about things like Edpuzzle or uh, PlayPosit, which is a, that a video-based um, stop and question video service that is offered, this is all of that rolled into one and one website that's really easy to use, that kids can use their phones, they can use their laptops, they can use their, their tablets, they can use whatever they have available to them to log on. It's really actually pretty easy. You can provide real-time feedback to students. I've been using it a lot lately in my classroom to be able to ask students a question. I have the screen up. I can show the answers and the kids see the answers that they're giving, I can provide real-time feedback. So if I say, well, this answer isn't quite good enough, you need to revise it, I can just click one quick button, and then they fix it until I say that that's acceptable. If it's still not quite good, I ask them to keep adding on. Um, so it's really nice. This is kind of what it looks like here. Uh, Jamie, you moved my clock on me, so I gotta sneak out there, but that's fine, I got it. Um, there are four different types of app, what I'm gonna call applets that they run. The first one and the one that I've been using a lot is Quickfire, um, which you just you can ask a question, you can plan it. If you have something you know that you have five or six questions during the lesson that you want to ask and you want to plan it forward, you can run it that way. Otherwise, if you're um, sometimes a little bit more on the fly and you like to ask those questions and check for understanding and you're not quite sure which understanding checks you're going to want to ask as the students are starting to show confusion if you're starting a new unit, you can do Quickfire and just type the questions or ask the questions and kids will be able to respond in real time and then you can go back and check the answers and just keep moving through questions like that. There's Discuss where you can actually uh, import either a PowerPoint or you can import Google Slides or you can start from scratch and put those formative, formative assessments right inside the PowerPoint. Um, 
in doing so, it's kind of nice because it's all right there on the website. It imports everything for you, but it does make your slideshows a little bit smaller. So if you've got limited presentation area, it might be a little bit more difficult to do that. Uh, team up, kids can collaborate. They can answer the one question together and start to brainstorm an idea and make that bigger. They can also make their own presentations based on that, which is really nice, but I haven't had a real good opportunity to use that portion. And then finally, there's Clip, which I haven't used yet, but I can envision myself using. I do a lot of that stuff when I know I'm going to be out of the classroom. I can set up a YouTube video or a series of YouTube videos. I can ask them questions, and then I, come back, I can come back and look at the feedback and see what they answered and if they're gaining the understanding that I expect them to from the videos based on specific questions that I ask them about those videos. Um, when it's running on the quickfire option, which I, I'm they're color coded too, which is nice, right? So you can always go back and go, oh, this was my quick fire that I took a picture of. Um, with a, with a, well, this is what it looks like. So you can make a little check mark here and say, oh, this is, this is great. Or you can give it the little send back button and tell them you need to revise your answer and it will kind of sit there and say the student is revising the answer until uh, they do so. So today I was asking my AP Psych students, how do you study? And we were talking a little bit about how one should study in order to best perform on an exam. And we've got a lot of different answers. And I was going through the value of things like metacognition and all of that fun stuff. But that is Spiral. All right, thank you, Jason. Our next presenter. From the Green Bay Public Schools is Rebecca Gothier. <laughs> All right, guys. So I am Rebecca Gothier. Um, I'm going to be talking to you guys about my maps, which is a really cool tool. So I am a social studies teacher, but this tool applies to more than just social studies. Um, you guys are probably really familiar with maps. Google Maps in general, you find directions, right? find businesses, that kind of stuff. But with Google My Maps, you can create your own custom maps, which is awesome, and your kids can do this as well. So you can drop pins, which are those red things, anywhere you want. You can search for them by a location, or you can just drop them at a, a, wherever you'd like. Um, and then on those pins, you can add titles and text, you can add pictures and videos as well, which works out really well for kids because they love adding that kind of stuff. Then you can create shapes. So if you want to look in a specific area, you can create a shape around that. And then you can create um, like lines or, I don't know, you can measure different distances with that. And then within that shape, you can also find like area and perimeter, which math people, like, that's awesome for to be able to see. And then another cool feature is that there are different layers. So within each layer, you can have different pins um, for different categories or whatnot that you would want the kids to be able to see. And then the other piece that I wanted to see was you can also change the pictures of the red pins um, and make it more customized that way, which is a really neat tool as well. All right, so I'm going to show you a few examples that I've done with my kids. Um, I've taught every subject at some point. Um, I'm normally a middle school teacher, but this would apply. You could do it with high schoolers. You could bring it into an elementary classroom very easily as well. So in ELA, I was thinking like lit trips would be perfect. You could take the setting of a story or a book that you're reading and be able to plot the, um, the setting, the plot, all of that right on a Google Mind map. Also with science, I've seen it used for like natural disasters, and I'll show you an example here quickly. So they were looking at different volcanoes around the world, and each of these pins, when you click on them, would bring up information about that volcano. And then notice some of them change the pins and you can make them different colors or pictures or shapes. Lots of customization there. I'll show you an example that I've done with geography. Oh, except I didn't share it apparently. Okay, well with this, um, my kids are actually going to be starting this Monday. <laughs> but it's an, one that I've used last year as well. Um, it goes with my China unit and so kids look at the a region of China and then they pull out different information about the government, the geography, fun festivals, foods, wildlife, lots of different things. 
and then they put different pins on and pictures and videos and whatnot. Um, I've also used this with history a little bit about like major events. We've looked at battles, um, Battle of Thermopylae we just did this week. So my kids have done used it that way as well. And then again for math, we've done area and perimeter. I don't know why those are not sharing, but anyways. Um, and then I've also done some app smashing with this too, where I use um, like amazing race activities, which if you're interested in, we can talk about that in the other room later. <laughs> but yeah. And then we can also use this collaboratively, which is awesome. Um, so you can share this with um, other students or with other teachers, and you can work on this all together. So that's an awesome feature as well. And then lastly, it's really great for personal use. My husband, Josh, and I, we went to Boston this summer. And so before we went, we wanted to try some different places. And so we pinned that all beforehand. And then it was really easy to be able to locate where we wanted to go when we were out there. So we didn't have to do as much research. But yeah, so that is Google My Maps. A really brief overview. Nice really fast. <laughs> Hello, Tundra newbie. Woo -woo. Um, my name is Sheila Cole, and I'm a sixth grade teacher at West Pier Middle School, and I currently teach science. And this year, we've aligned with Next Generation Science Standards, so all of my time has been spent trying to figure out what those standards are, how they align, and I realized, oh my gosh, I'm totally missing the technology piece with my students. So I had to figure out a way to incorporate technology into what we were doing and not lose content time. So what I decided to do was create something called a seven-minute challenge. And we do this at the beginning of class every day. And what I do is when students come into the room, I post a challenge for them on the board. And it usually has to do with technology. And they have seven minutes to try to figure out how to do it. And so in this way, I'm allowing them to explore technology. There's no grade attached to it. If they get it, great. If they don't get it, that's absolutely fine. But it's just a way for them to experience some things that we might not otherwise get to do. So an example of some of the things that we have done, um, the first one that we did, which was our most popular one was I asked them to create a vocaroo of their favorite joke. So they went into vocaroo, they recorded their joke, they put a link in a form. We have a link of 130 awesome jokes. We did a, it was a particularly stressful day, so we did a keep calm and poster session. Oh, sorry. Um, we, they had another challenge where they had to put their voice on a picture. I didn't care what it was, I don't care what they used. So some used Fluberoo, some used uh, Scratch, some used Blabberize. We had a day where they had to find their 10 favorite literary characters. They had to put them into a random name picker. They had to find their one. We put all of them in a class together, and then we picked our class champion. That was a fun one. Um, some days we have things where they have to uh, experience a game or a simulation of some sort. So this one right here is an erosion one. Here uh, there were like different maps of Earth with its statistics or different globes. And so we just spent a day exploring those and then talking about them. Some days I have them fill out forms. Uh, this one had to do with their own personal self-efficacy and thinking about how they learn. And some days I put a um, wordle on the board and then I just say, okay, figure out what this article is about. And so then they get to Together and they try to figure this out. So there are four things that I found with this seven minute challenge. And I picked seven minutes because five seemed too fast 
10, I couldn't give up 10 minutes of content time. And seven minutes is really good with the kids who reach frustration level. At seven minutes, they're done, and so that's fine. But a couple of the perks of doing this is one, seven minutes at the beginning of class, oh my gosh, I can take attendance, I can talk to kids that I need to, I can touch base, and they're working. Um, another thing is that students are critically thinking because I don't tell them how to do it. I just say, this is what I want you to do, and they can do it however they want. The kids that get it then, the third perk is that they're going around and they're helping others and they're sharing their knowledge and kids have become very collaborative and they know to go to each other first because they probably know more than I do. And then the last thing is that um, we just have, um, what was I going to say there? Sorry. So there may be only three things with it. But the <laughs> fact is that this has just allowed us to create an environment where it's OK to mess up with technology because you can do whatever we want. And so when we're sitting out in the other session, if you have any ideas for seven minute challenges, I totally would love to steal your ideas. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, I am a seventh grade math teacher, um, and I was told that more math teachers are wondering how they can start getting more technology into the math classes. And um, Desmos is the way to do it. I absolutely love Desmos. I'm excited to share it with you. My students are excited every day that we get to do it. If I wait too long, they remind me that it's been a while since we've done a Desmos activity. Um, the things that I really love about it, I kind of listed there. Um, I, I'm a big believer in students constructing their own knowledge, being able to manipulate the numbers, to see the relationships, to actually try stuff out. And that really is a difficult thing as you get higher in math to take the higher level math concepts and still make it something that kids can explore. So whether you are a math teacher or not, I'm going to have all of you try this right now um, from the student experience. I've never done it on phones before, and I realize that's what most of you have, so we're going to see how that works. Um, but if you could grab a device and go to student.desmos.com, and it's going to ask you for a class code, which I have written right there. And we are going to do something called Functions Carnival. Now, Functions Carnival is not something I created. What I love about Desmos is there is a fabulous Desmos team that works on creating all of these wonderful activities. So I'm able, as a teacher, to just go in and preview them. I can use them as they are. I can edit them. I can create my own. And it, again, it just it's easy for me to be able to think about what we're learning and find a Desmos activity for it. When you get in there, you're, it's going to have a little animation that you play, and it's going to ask you to sketch the graph of what's happening. And it's OK if you have no idea what it's talking about. You can sketch a smiley face. You can sketch your name. Anything you sketch on that graph, it's going to show you if you're. You might have to scroll on your screen, just so you know. Oh, you have to scroll. <laughs> Is it okay with a small screen warning? <coughs> yeah, if you're on a phone, hold your phone landscape. That'll help a little bit. And I did have, I can log back in here too. I had the teacher end open, it got closed. Oh, no, it's okay. I just. <coughs> I thought. <laughs> then you don't have the code when I do it. G5, J4, R. So on the teacher end, what I get to see of this is it shows me all of, and you, oh dear, that's not what I wanted to do. Present that again. It shows me all of the graphs that you are making. Um, there are, if you arrow forward in the activity, there are questions. You answer all of that is stored on the teacher end. I can see what students are answering. I can see the graphs that they're making. There are card sorts that you can make. There are what are called polygraphs, which is kind of like a guess who type of game. Um, so there's all types of stuff that 
If you want to know more about Desmos in the other room, I can kind of show you all the different activities, what I would su suggest for middle school, what I would suggest for high school. Um, typically, it's used in grades 6 through 12. So if you're, if you're not able to get into it, I don't know if it doesn't work. Again, we don't use the phones in the classroom. It does work on iPads. It works on the Chromebooks. Um, and again, the kids, it's very interactive. And even if they're not following the directions, like I said, if you draw a smiley face, which clearly is not what you need, the kids, the kids still get to see, like, what does that do? Like, if I write my name, what is, that, what is the parachute guy going to do if the graph is my name? And they really get to interact with those numbers. My time is up. There you go. Four minutes. Go stand. <laughs> So that is it for our five sessions. Mr. Mr. Jager, you get the stage for a minute if you want. Now, give you more than two minutes. I'd like to give you two minutes. Bye. So before we break into the next group, I want to introduce uh, Mike Jaber. Mike is um, the instructional technology group. I don't want to give you the wrong title. Right? Board, board. Coordinator for the Shibu Sheboygan Area School District. Um, <coughs> all the things you see on the screen, Mike literally has in a table in the other room. Um, my wife is not going to be happy with Mike because all of these toys I want. So. Um, <laughs> With that, I'll shut up. Oh, Thanks for letting me crash the uh, party here, team. So, um, I am a, a gadget person, and I <laughs> love to bring gadgets into our district for not only our students, but our staff as well. And if you come over to my area, you are going to see some of the things that we use in our district. Um, I'm just going to give you a, like, I'm going to talk like an auctioneer for a couple of minutes. So, this double robot we use for homebound or hospital bound students. It's basically a virtual student. So a student could be in the hospital or at home. They can control this device. I take it over to the school, and they actually go to school with this. They roll down the halls with their, their um, peers. They do spelling word, uh, you know, studying, things like that. So it's like they are there. And it's, it's amazing if you want to see it in action. I did bring this, so you can see that. The Mayo <laughs> is an arm gesture uh, armband. <clears throat> that actually measures the muscle contractions in your arm. And so as a teacher, I want to be hands-free. I could have this on. I could be controlling this presentation just by waving my arm. I can actually annotate. I can actually zoom in just by making gestures with my arm, which sends it to the computer that uh, makes it amazing. So you got, you got to come and check that out as well. The cue ball and the catch box. If you want kids to be engaged in the classroom, get one of these because you throw these to the kids, not at them, you throw them to the kids, <laughs> and they can talk into the top, and it magnifies or amplifies their voice. And if you want um, kids to just light up, even your shy kids, um, or the kids that talk really quiet, this is an amazing tool for them. I brought some robots. This was uh, Cosmo, a great gift for your kids. They will have a virtual pet if you get this for them, because it's the first robot that really uses artificial intelligence, and it learns as you play with it. It learns your face, facial recognition. So you can put a couple people in, and it'll look at your face, it'll say your name, it'll look at Jamie's face, it'll say his name. And it's an amazing piece of technology. I brought a Piper kit, which is actually a kit that you can make a computer that plays Minecraft. And so kids absolutely love this. It's a very simplified way to make a computer that plays probably the most popular game for kids right now, which is Minecraft. Uh, I have Meeper Bots. This is a company out of Whitewater. It's $50, it's Bluetooth, you build Legos on top of it, and then you can actually control this with your phone or any type of tablet, and you can actually code with it as well, because coding is really, really big in schools right now. Um, and then, I'm going to, this uh, is a machine <laughs> I purchased and I, I brought, and there are only three of these in the United States, and if you are someone who loves music like I do, but I can't play it, this makes me feel like a musician because I can play it with this. So you have to stop over. It's called the Mash Machine. Don't worry, you'll hear it. It awesome. is based out of Estonia, and um, it took me about three months to get this, but they were not using it in edu education at all. It was just being used commercially at trade shows to suck people to the booth, and then they would talk to them about their products. So I said, there is a market for education, and I'm going to bring it to education. So I am working with the company in Estonia, and I am bringing these to education because I've taken them to schools, to conferences, and the kids, once they see this, they absolutely freak out. 
and you can save their music, you can share their music, um, they can create their own custom loops as well. So if you want to talk about them taking control of their own learning, this is a machine that does that and it talks their language, which is music. So stop by and uh, we'll have a dance party. <laughs> awesome. Thank All you. Right. Um, presenters, if you want to sneak out now and get a head start. It is 7.03, so we didn't, not too bad. Um, we're going to break out of the large section. Like I said, there's, there's snacks, there's tables. It is absolutely unstructured, and you're going to, Mike, he's not lying. It, the the math machine's really cool. So you got to that a little bit. As well as, this is the other, the other, the other presenters. Um, I forgot to say, we are recording this, and I'm going to break it up um, and have it on the website, so you'll be able to reference this later. And if any of the um, presenters have any resources, we'll package that on the website as well. Um, so. Go, you, can, you can leave your stuff in here nice. if you want. Um, feel free to go to the large company and go out the back here, take a right, take a right, and you'll get in there in the, in the snacks. It's time to just basically collaborate, talk to each other, and enjoy some snacks.